Hi, it's Dr. Fox, and in this video, I want to talk about narcissistic mothers. And I know that this can be a sensitive topic for a lot of individuals, but I think that it's important that we go over it. And I think going over these various behaviors, tactics, and the impact that it may have had on you is really important. And I know that a lot of times daughters or sons of narcissistic mothers often wonder, Am I doing that to my kids? Is this something that I'm engaging in or how it impact your relationships? And we're going to talk about that in this video. Absolutely. So hang out with me. Let's unpack it and let's get into it and like, share and subscribe and comment. And here we go. So common narcissistic mother behaviors and tactics. Now these include it's a lack of empathy and they don't care or they feel indifferent to pain and suffering of their child. It just doesn't seem to move them. They don't seem to have this discomfort while seeing their child suffer, particularly if that child's suffering makes the mother look good or it validates some of that mother's feelings, then the mother absolutely just doesn't have any empathy and they don't really connect with it in any way, shape or form. And they also have this constant need for admiration. So you have to be sure to praise, thank, and acknowledge her every chance you get. And any success that you have, you have to attribute it to her and her treatment of you and how she influenced your perspective and your view and all of these different factors. So you have to constantly give that admiration and praise. Oh, it's because of you I did this. And, you know, thanks, mom, because of you, I was able to do that, this and that. There's also this tendency to belittle or manipulate her children as well. And this is everybody fails and struggles, right? So it's because of your personal imperfections and issues that all of us have. Those are seen as character flaws. They're not related to her. They're related to you. So you have that, that psychological distance of any problems or issues, which all of us have as we're developing. But she says, oh, that that's your character flaw. You're, this is just like your father. This is why you're broken, or this is why you can't do that, or this is why you're not successful, or this is why that person broke up with you, whatever it is. And they take this opportunity again to belittle you or even manipulate you, but they do that also because, and it's this narcissistic process where they think that if I make you feel broken enough or failed enough, then that means that I'm smart enough to recognize it and you should see that I have all the right answers, right? Now, there's also a high tendency to neglect your needs, right? As you're growing up and that you sort of internalize the sense that your needs are secondary. They're just not that important because her needs are primary and she doesn't communicate her needs. You're supposed to sense them. You're supposed to be able to figure out what those are as they change. You're supposed to be able to read them and understand them over time. Now, a lot of children of narcissistic parents are able to sort of sense that and pick that up because there's this constant vigilance that if I don't, if I'm not constantly aware of your needs and all these other factors, then everything will just fall apart. Then I'm a huge failure. So your success equates to my sense of self-esteem and your success and a lot of narcissists I have this internal sense of fear, shame, doubt, inferiority. So it's always changing. So it's so fickle. So you're always trying to keep up and it's so, so hard to do that. And you feel this constant pressure to always be reading her and her environment to make sure that she's okay, even though your needs have been neglected and you've learned over time to allow your needs to be secondary. Narcissistic mothers are also overly controlling and critical. Now, you never do things right. And if they did work out, it's not because you did it. It's because you got lucky, right? Because shaming you, again, it goes back to see how smart I am and how great I am that I'm powerful enough to shame you. But it's also that you didn't follow her directions 100%. Had you done exactly what I told you to do, and they don't, by the way, they tell you only pieces and very broken cryptic pieces typically. So you have to put them together because if they told you exactly what to do, then that would add to their sense of responsibility. So they never do that. So then you have to put this puzzle together about what has to be done. And then if it works out, well, that's because she told you to do it. But if it doesn't, 
that's because you're broken and you're a failure. And another common control tactic that a lot of narcissistic mothers use is guilt or conditional love to maintain that control. So if you don't do this, she won't talk to you again. Silent treatment is often a very common punitive measure that they engage in. Now, if you don't give her enough of A, B, or C, she'll again go back into the silent treatment or she'll enlist others to see you as bad, broken, this horrible kid or whatever it may be. And then now you have a crowd or a group of individuals that's like, yeah, Billy or Barbara should have done such and such, such and such. And I can't believe she didn't do that, even though that's not the whole story, right? Because the story has been largely skewed so that she looks safe. She wasn't a part of the failure or the error, whatever it was, but you look like you're the number one, 100% cause of it. And it's like, oh my God. And it's this constant pressure that a lot of these sons and daughters of narcissistic mothers experience and they internalize. And it really builds into their sense of self, their concept of self. And this leads to this wonderment a lot of times that these kids start to wonder, I mean, so I'm lacking in love. So then when I face rejection and all of us face rejection, but for these particular individuals, when you face rejection, it's because you are not good enough. It's because you've been rejected because of the level of failure that you are. And it becomes this internalized pattern and belief that adds to behaviors that continue to cause problems and difficulties in your life. And I think to really have a good perspective, we got to look at, okay, so how do narcissistic mothers and the relationship that you have with her, how does it impact you and who you are? So if you are unaware of these tactics and issues, so you have likely internalized many of these expectations and you likely play them out in close and romantic relationships over and over and over again. And the way these can manifest is you don't stick up for yourself. You blame yourself first without assessing the situation objectively. You intensely desire connection, but there's never enough connection. So you don't feel truly close to someone because there's always that distance. Like, is this real? Can I really count on this? Because you were taught over time that any real connection isn't really connection at all. And that you're used to and comfortable with. And comfortable doesn't mean good. It just means what you're used to. So that comfortable connection is really one that isn't really healthy. It's not really adaptive. It tends to be maladaptive and it wears away at your own sense of self. And individuals with narcissistic mothers also develop this intense codependency. It's this need to be needed. That's the definition of codependency. It's the need to be needed. So I constantly need to be needed to validate who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. And these codependent relationships, they play out over and over and over again. So you don't decide the pace of your relationship. Your partner does. You don't decide if there's success or failure in your relationship. Your partner does because you need that. And that sense of validation, external validation from that person gives you an internalized sense of validation that everything is okay. But there's always that voice. And I call it with my clients, family in the head. I got that from Lauren Smith Benjamin. She's wonderful, the amazing researcher into personality disorders. And she talks about this family in the head, right? So we internalize mom. So it's mom's voice telling us how we're never good enough, how we'll never get there. And you'll never truly be loved because you're broken and defective. And that's one of those ways. Another is that you have this deep-seated depression, but it has this unclear origin. Like you're not really sure how it got here, but I've always had it. I've always felt this way. So I've always felt second. I've never felt important. And this concept of joy is often one that is so distant and almost inconceivable. But that sadness, you feel it and you feel it like inside. It's, it's this intensive sorrow, this repetitive and ongoing sense of sorrow that was actually put in there and nurtured by all of those narcissistic tactics, behaviors, belittling, shaming, so on and so forth, that you experienced by that narcissistic parent, that narcissistic mother. And you have this intense self-doubt 
about your ability to make decisions and to trust in yourself. And that goes to what I talked about, that codependency, always looking to someone else to get this connection with someone else, to validate who you are, but it's never enough validation or it's not a trusted validation. So you're constantly wondering, worrying, and feeling unbalanced in your relationship. And it does cause a lot of questioning about self, others, relationships. And it may not just be romantic relationships. It can also be in parental relationships as well. Now, if you have a narcissistic mother, we're going through, it's like, yeah, I have that. Well, how do you deal with that narcissistic mother? I think the first step, you have to radically accept who she is. Now, I didn't say what, but who she is. And we have to challenge this internalized idea of the mother you want or you even may need and see the mother you have. And this can be really hard, right? All of us have this idea of good mother, this caring, compassionate person who's going to help us, nurture us, and care for us. And what I see in a lot of my clients that have narcissistic mothers or parents, that they're always trying to reach that level. And what the really sophisticated narcissistic parents have done, they've created this really ill-defined nebulous bar for you to reach. But you can't quite get there because it's not quite defined. So you're always kind of like, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think so. If I do this, this is good, but then you'll love me for this, but then why isn't she like this? And you internalize that and it creates a lot of internal confusion and a lot of self-doubt. And that's why we have to radically accept who she is. It doesn't mean you don't love her. It means that you recognize who she is and what her tactics are. And I think that that creates an ability for you to set boundaries and you have to create and maintain those healthy boundaries. You don't deserve to be shamed. You don't deserve to be belittled. And you don't deserve to be manipulated. And I think that you have to have those boundaries in place. Arguing with her is not going to do it. You're not going to argue with her enough that she's suddenly going to be like, wait a minute, I need to be this object or idea of good mother because that's just not going to happen. So we just, again, have to radically accept who they are and then set those good boundaries. Also, you got to stay calm. Whew, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. And I know that that's a tough one. Got to try not to react emotionally to what she says, even if it's an insult. You keep your cool because when you lose your cool, then she turns it on you, right? See how disrespectful you are to your mother. See how terrible you are to your mother. And I've recently been rewatching The Sopranos and Tony Soprano's mother is this narcissistic mother absolutely through and through. It's a really good example of all of these tactics and manipulations and dangling of love to try to get them to pull closer but then whenever they make a mistake or there's an error she actually laughs when tony falls at one point or all these different factors and just about how corrosive she is to tony and his sisters and their sense of self that they just wear away at them but underneath they're aspiring for this love and connection and part of them i think believes that they'll never actually get it and lastly it's good to plan your responses, right? So you've been with your mom long enough. You have a good idea of what she's like. You hopefully see her tactics. And if not, just sit back and pay attention. You'll learn a lot from her. And by maintaining your cool and trying to be objective, you'll learn more about the manipulation tactics. You'll learn more about the shaming procedures. You'll learn more about the belittling that she engages in. And just remember that have a respectful exit strategy when the conversation goes off the rails. What are you gonna say? So things start to go south and say, you know, I think, think we're done for today. You know, or thanks mom, I'm gonna have to catch up with you later. Take care, bye. Because remember, you're not gonna argue the narcissism out of her. You're not going to argue with her enough to where she starts to take responsibility and do things differently. Now, is there a chance of that? Absolutely. There are no absolutes in the world. Is there a chance that something happens she finally realizes that, oh man, I've been this narcissistic mother, I need to change? Sure. I can tell you in over two decades of working with individuals who have been parents, partners, so on and so forth, of narcissistic mothers or partners, things like that, we haven't really hit that level. Now, I've had individuals who were narcissists or who were along the narcissistic spectrum who came to me for treatment and they said, I think I'm a narcissist, what can I do about it? And a lot of times... They didn't have these ingrained traits, these ingrained aspects or manipulative behaviors. 
that were so almost habitual, they just fell into these strategies and behaviors. Instead, something happened. Usually it was them. A lot of times it's been a health scare where they realized, wow, you know, I had this health scare and no one, no one came to look after me. Nobody seemed to care. And I wonder why that is. And we start to unpack these things. Or they incur what's called a narcissistic wound, which certainly the health scare can be that. No one comes to look after them. That can be that narcissistic wound or something else in business or in their own love life or something like that. And then they may decide to change, but you are not going to make them change. You're not going to be able to make someone else change. You have to recognize who they are, keep your cool, understand what their behaviors are, and have that planned response that if things start to go off the rails, say, you know, I appreciate that. I, th I, th I think I'm going to step out for today. And she may egg you on to engage because that may be what she's looking for. But maintain your own sense of composure and your own sense of power and control. And that will help you see things clearly and manage things better. And I know sometimes it's, it's going to hurt because, you know, the relationship with our parents, we want it to be this particular idea, but we may not have it. And they're people too, and we have to accept who they are. And that's hard, hard to do. But I appreciate your time and attention. And I hope this was helpful. And please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.